Hello, this is Mark Holmes, Editorial Director of Via Satellite, and we're here again for another of our Thursday morning conversations. And I'm uh, delighted we have an old friend of Via Satellite to uh, talk to today, Jean-Yves Legal, who is the uh, president of the French Space Agency. Some of you will obviously know Jean-Yves from his time at uh, Ariane Space as well. So uh, firstly, a, a big hello, Jean-Yves, and uh, how are you and how has life been for you under lockdown? Yes, uh, good uh, morning. Uh, in fact, I am not an old friend. I am a long-standing friend. It's different. But uh, so it's a pleasure to be uh, online with you and uh, to speak for uh, via satellite, uh, which is uh, something uh, which is uh, impossible to not know in the in space industry for uh, many, many years. Yeah, it was, it was our pleasure as well. So tell us a little bit. I mean, we, we've all been sort of living, I guess, now around six months under this sort of pandemic. How has, you, you know, your life changed, you know, working from, from home and, and getting back, um, you know, because obviously, I mean, you have a fairly demanding position there. Tell us a little bit about what life has been like over the last six months for you. I would say that uh, we had to face uh, circumstances uh, which were uh, totally unpredictable. Uh, first of all, uh, as president of CNES, of course, uh, I had to take care of uh, the health of uh, 2,400 uh, staff. And uh, it has been uh, quite a challenge because uh, we have been uh, deeply impacted by uh, the virus. We had one casualty in uh, French Vienna. We had a significant number of people who got sick. But uh, in spite of that, uh, what uh, impressed me a lot is uh, the capability of uh, our staff, staff to organize uh, the work, to continue to work in spite of these uh, very uh, difficult circumstances. The first part, uh, when uh, there was a containment from uh, the 16th of March to the 11th of May uh, with teleworking. Then uh, before summer, we had a period uh, with a lot of optimism. And I should say that uh, till uh, for, since the end of August, it's a little bit different. Friend. But uh, nevertheless, uh, either in teleworking or uh, in the office, uh, people work. For me, uh, life is totally different because uh, you see, uh, I used to uh, travel a lot, uh, to see our partners, uh, to have uh, international meetings and so on. And uh, since uh, the, uh, the mid-March, I didn't travel so much. My last uh, intercontinental uh, journey was for uh, Satellite 2020. I was in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, on the 9th of March, uh, uh, I attended did uh, the show by Elon Musk. I took my flight back to Paris and since then I am in Paris. And how's it been? I mean, you said you sort of travel, traveled a lot and I know that I, you know, I've seen you at multiple locations around the world over the last years. How have you adjusted to a life of more time in Paris? What's it been like for you? No, it's a different life, but uh, frankly speaking, it is not uh, the life as before without traveling. It's uh, all new life because we had the containment and now we are obliged uh, to wear a mask. Uh, it's very, very difficult uh, to have meetings and so on. It's a new life, uh, which is not uh, very, very efficient. But I think, as I said, that uh, the most important is uh, to take care of uh, the health of our staff in your private life and uh, your family, your uh, friends. And it's a totally new life. And uh, we expect uh, that uh, vaccine will be found or something in order to be back to a normal life, but uh, unfortunately, um, it doesn't seem to be for tomorrow. I mean, one of the things with these, with the, and we'll come a little bit to, to some of the work that you're doing. One of the things we've been talking about with a lot of people on here is is getting to know them a little bit more personally and and find out, you know, what they've been, you know, what they've been watching during lockdown. So uh, TV programs, movies, music. So, uh, what sort of you've been doing in your spare time? Any movie recommendations? 
In fact, I should say that uh, with the content mind, I discovered the TV because uh, in general, I never looked at the TV. I spend my time uh, to get the information on my smartphone or on my uh, uh, PC, but uh, I spent a lot of time uh, to look uh, at the TV with the news because of course it was uh, something which was uh, very, let us say, uh, bringing a lot of uh, questions and uh, you need a lot of information. Uh, I spent a lot of time also to listen to music and uh, in general I used to listen to music when I am in the plane so now I listen to music uh, at home and uh, to do things that uh, I didn't use uh, to do uh, in my garden and so on but uh, in the same time I, of course when you are stuck in Paris it was uh, and it is still difficult uh, to go to the swimming pool to go to the fitness center because of the virus you can run of course around your building but it is not the same um, it's a uh, different uh, different life but uh, so we have to face it because there are uh, circumstances which are more uh, much more difficult and once again um, the most important is the health of course because i had a number of friends uh, who became sick uh, both at CNES and in my personal friends uh, unfortunately uh, i know some people who passed away because of the virus so it's uh, quite difficult but uh, what is probably uh, the biggest question is uh, when uh, will be the end because as i said we had the containment after that in june uh, there was uh, a dose of uh, optimism and uh, since august uh, we have again uh, people who are sick uh, probably the borders which uh, are going to be closed i used to i had to go yesterday to brussels which is not so far from paris one hour and 20 minutes of train but it is not possible it's not possible to visit uk to go to germany and so on so it's a quite a difficult uh, situation to work Okay, let me just go back because uh, you, you mentioned music there. So I'm sort of curious in terms of your, your sort of music tastes and likes. And uh, is there anything, any particular genres or arti artists that you've been listening to? Oh, you see, uh, I used to listen to classic rock uh, with uh, uh, the biggest standards of the Rolling Stones. But uh, uh, it didn't change a lot for me because I started to listen to them uh, 50 years ago. And uh, during 50 years, I should uh, have, I should uh, have listened more than uh, one million times uh, Sympathy for the Devil, but uh, I continue to listen to it. No, I'm, I, I like a few Stones tracks myself. Have you ever seen them in concert? Have, have, you, uh, um, have you seen them live in concert? Yes, yes, of course. And in particular, uh, the Stones... Uh, uh, singing, uh, you can't uh, get what you want, uh, and uh, with a Charlie Wants uh, playing drums without drums, it was uh, quite uh, surprising. <laughs> when did you, um, or, or how many times have you seen them? Well, when did you last see them? Oh, I saw them a lot of times. The first time was uh, in Nice. Uh, it was the day uh, before what we call uh, in France baccalaureate, which is the exam that we had uh, at the end of our studies. And it was the day before uh, the, um, when I, what I have to do in mathematics. So I went, nevertheless, I went to the concert. I got the exam. But uh, after them, uh, I uh, saw them uh, many, many times uh, in France, uh, in the US, uh, in UK. Uh, last time was in the new uh, concert uh, room uh, in Paris, uh, in uh, Nanterre, uh, the new uh, arena. And I understand that they could play again next year and uh, I will be the first one to buy tickets. Okay, so you're a, a massive Stones fan. Uh, they're your number one, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, um, space industry. I mean, it's been obviously a big, I mean, it's been a big year anyway, lots of big news stories. I mean, we've seen uh, things involving OneWeb, Intelsat, Speedcast, um, as well as obviously other things going on in the industry. As, as someone who's obviously in a, what, what do you make of where we're at as an industry right now? I mean, uh, and sort of, you know, what do you think the effects of the, the pandemic might be on the industry? I think that uh, we, 
will have uh, probably uh, two opposite effects. Uh, on one side, it is clear that uh, there are a number of projects which were uh, difficult projects, uh, which uh, got some difficulties. Uh, you spoke about OneWeb, uh, you know that there are uh, some uh, other operators facing difficulties. Uh, but uh, in the same time, it is clear that uh, with uh, teleworking, with uh, people uh, stopping to travel and uh, having a number of uh, video conference, Skype and so on, uh, there is uh, uh, more and more uh, space uh, uh, tools are more and more used to face the pandemic. And so we have uh, two opposite effects. And uh, since I am definitely optimistic, uh, I think that uh, the negative effects uh, will disappear. But uh, I hope that the positive effects uh, will uh, remain and that uh, at the end of the day, uh, the space industry uh, will exit the pandemic uh, stronger than uh, what it was uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. And in terms of like, have you had to sort of scale back the, the agency's objectives over the next year? I mean, I mean, obviously, as you said, all of a sudden you reach a situation in March where health and welfare of your workforce is the priority you can't travel you can't go to you know any number of places in, in europe right now how is that what is the the practical impact on sort of the roadmap for the the french space agency over the next year in fact, uh, you see uh, CNES has uh, two uh, different uh, parts. A part uh, which is devoted uh, to uh, the European Space Agency since uh, we are uh, the biggest contributor to ESA. And uh, by chance, uh, we had uh, the ministerial conference at Seville, which has been a huge success because we requested 14 uh, billion and we got 14.4 at the end of the day. But uh, it was in late uh, November. Uh, we uh, escaped, the, we, we, we avoided the terrible situation if uh, the conference uh, had been scheduled uh, in April or May because we would have been uh, obliged to postpone it. So we have a very robust situation uh, at ISA level uh, due to the success of the ministerial and for the next three years. And so a number of huge decisions have been uh, taken in Seville and have been uh, implementing during the pandemic, uh, I think, in particular about uh, the contracts for Copernicus, uh, all what we decided for launchers and uh, many other topics. So this is uh, the uh, is a part and uh, at, the at the level of decisions to be taken, uh, we have been fortunate because these decisions, uh, very important for the next three years, have been taken before the pandemic. Now, uh, on uh, the second part of our activity, which is the activity of CNES by itself, uh, what we are doing mostly at the Toulouse Space Center has not been too much impacted because of the dedication of our staff. We have been very impacted in French Guiana, but now it's over. And once again, our team made a fantastic job uh, in uh, uh, continuing to work, in resuming the work in spite of the pandemic with uh, totally new approaches and so on. The construction pad, the construction for the launch pad of Ariane 6 also, we resume the work and uh, finally uh, with uh, minimum uh, inconvenience. But uh, I should say that all what is related to uh, the international cooperation uh, is difficult because uh, things uh, which were uh, already on tracks, uh, uh, we, we achieved them. For instance, uh, we had to complete the uh, installation of the super, super cam camera on the Perseverance rover uh, to launch it to Mars uh, on the 30th of July, and we did it. But when it is time to meet people, to discuss new projects, and so on. Of course, we can do it uh, remotely, but uh, I think that uh, nothing can uh, replace a direct contact. And uh, today, uh, we are definitely suffering uh, this lack of direct contact. And uh, I can tell you that, uh, as it is possible, uh, I will uh, fly immediately to visit uh, our uh, partners worldwide because it's uh, fundamental if we want to continue to support a strong uh, international cooperation. And I mean, can you give me an example of a, a project or something that you think, it, you know, that could end up being put back or, or that's suffering as a result because you're not able to travel and, and see people directly? 
No, for instance, uh, we had to discuss with our friends at JPL of what we are going to do uh, after uh, SWOT. Uh, SWOT is a very ambitious project which is under development uh, with a launch uh, next year to uh, study uh, the fresh waters uh, everywhere on the, on the planet. And uh, we, we wanted to discuss uh, the next steps, the decadal survey and so on. And uh, we uh, had the meetings which are planned and uh, we didn't uh, have this meeting. And the same uh, with uh, cooperation uh, with uh, India, uh, with uh, Japan, with Russia, with China, uh, with Korea, with the Emirates, with Israel. So uh, it is clear that uh, uh, meetings, uh, we don't have this me these meetings. Uh, now, uh, once again, uh, we are entering into a new phase because um, at the beginning of the containment, let us say uh, March, April, May, then before summer, uh, we thought thinking about uh, a quick return to a normal life. Yeah. Now, I think that uh, everyone understood that uh, we will uh, live to uh, continue with the virus, probably with the heavy difficulty to travel. And so, uh, in fact, we didn't organize a video conference and so on because everyone expected uh, to have a face-to-face -face meeting once the pandemic is over. Now, uh, everyone understands that the pandemic will not be over for several months and we start to organize a video conference with my different counterparts in the US, in China, uh, everywhere in the world. So I think that uh, we are... Uh, if I can say, in the season two of the pandemic, uh, the season one has been the shock, the state of shock. Uh, yeah. This is something new, and uh, we have to face it. And now, uh, this is not new, but uh, we have uh, to uh, live with it. Did, did it sort of, you know, because when we've been doing other conversations with industry leaders, there was almost a sense that even, you know, there was a sense that people were really caught by surprise by this, that, you know, in sort of the March timeframe, you know, there was an expectation that, uh, you know, even by the, maybe the second half of this year, that things would uh, you know, start to get back a little bit, but obviously it hasn't. I mean, from, from your sort of personal opinion, when what you were seeing in March or April, had you, did it catch you by surprise in any way or has the way things have laid out, not, you know, kind of gone? No, okay. Frankly speaking, uh, I started to think that uh, we are go we will face uh, a very difficult situation as in January. Uh, there is just uh, a point I want to insist: uh, late January, uh, there was uh, there were a number of people from CNES who were supposed to go to um, symposium in Singapore in early February. At this time, um, the pandemic uh, was not serious, but I decided. Uh, that people will not go to Singapore because uh, they were in Singapore in uh, late January, early February, a number of people uh, we were sick. And I should say that uh, I've been, uh, it has been very wise uh, because I am sure that uh, if uh, we had people traveling at this time, probably they would have uh, uh, caught uh, the virus. But afterwards, uh, we spoke about uh, the containment in February and when it happened in uh, uh, March, uh, okay, it was uh, it was waited, but uh, I think that the difference now is that, uh, um, in fact, uh, we spent uh, all the period before summer and uh, having in mind that uh, just after summer, uh, end of August, early September, uh, the pandemic will be over and uh, things will be normal. And during summer. We realized that, that it will not be the case. And me, if I have a look to uh, my schedule, uh, all what was planned still uh, mid of September uh, in spring, uh, it vanished in the air. And now uh, I have nothing till uh, Christmas. The next, uh, let us say, uh, uh, milestone uh, for many people now are uh, early next year and for some people uh, later, uh, let us say next spring and so on. But it shows that uh, uh, the virus is still there and uh, gathering, traveling is definitely not possible till uh, we find a vaccine or something like that. And it's a new uh, period. And the difference uh, between uh, now and a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, we expected the end of the situation 
situation. Now, more and more people say we have to cope with the situation for uh, an undefined period. And so we have to uh, adapt accordingly. And just sort of final couple of questions. I just want to get your overall thoughts on the launch industry, because obviously you're a, a keen expert on that. And uh, we've got a lot of competition there at the moment and uh, all kinds of innovations taking place as uh, someone that was, you know, at the sharp end not that long ago with Ariane Spurs. What do you see the current state of the, the launch industry? No, the launch industry is developing, uh, let us say, uh, according to uh, what uh, we uh, we said a few years ago. There are newcomers uh, which are more and more uh, active. Uh, there are uh, game changers. Uh, I think that uh, the decisions taken uh, in Europe uh, by ISA and in particular at the Ministerial Conference of Civil have been very, very wise because in spite of uh, very tough competition, Competition with newcomers, with uh, some rules which could be different from what uh, we knew in the past. In spite of that, uh, Europe uh, is still uh, well alive with uh, its uh, launchers, with the present launchers. You know that uh, when I was with Iron Space, I developed the family of launch vehicles, Ariane, Soyuz, and Vega, and uh, it works perfectly. Uh, we have now, uh, during the year, several launches of Soyuz and Vega besides the launches of Ariane and uh, in my uh, early days at CNES I've been a strong advocate to uh, develop Ariane 6 and uh, Ariane 6 is coming and so it's the best uh, answer uh, of Europe to many other uh, newcomers in the US, in China, uh, in uh, emerging countries. So globally uh, we have a situation uh, which is, uh, let us say, uh, not so bad for Europe and uh, with uh, many Many, uh, in many fields, uh, we are, we are uh, very, very uh, competitive. A few days ago, uh, Vega launched uh, 53 uh, satellites for 21 customers during the same launch, a new approach and so on. So we are evolving and uh, I think that it is absolutely remarkable because uh, it clearly shows that uh, Europe can be united when it has to be united. And as I said, uh, at the Ministerial Conference at Seville, we have had uh, much more money than uh, what we requested, what we expected, and in particular in the field of launchers, because the member states clearly understood uh, that uh, having uh, a family of launch vehicles uh, and European launch vehicles to launch a European payload is ab absolutely a must. And I always like to end on a, on a fun question. So we know that we now know that you're a Rolling Stones fan, which is which is good. So I'm going to ask you to name your th three favorite Rolling Stones songs. Ah, the three. Oh, it's difficult. Uh, let us say, of course, the first one, uh, Sympathy for the Devil. It's probably uh, the best one. Uh, the third one will be uh, You Can't Always Get What You Want. And uh, we need uh, another one uh, in the middle, uh, not uh, so popular, but uh, very, very nice uh, memory model. Okay, well, that, that's great. Uh, it's been a well, Jean Eve, it's been a real pleasure. We haven't caught up in a, in a little while. I'm, I'm glad to see you're uh, healthy and well, and I uh, wish you and Kness all, all the best over the months ahead. Um, we know that uh, you do a fantastic job in, in driving the European space industry as well as the space industry in France as well. So it's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you today, and we, and we look forward to seeing you soon. So thank you very much uh, for the invitation. It was a real pleasure. And I hope that the next one will be face-to-face -face because it will be the demonstrations that we overcame the pandemic. Thank you. All the best. Thanks, Jean-Yves.